Welcome to Episode 9 of The Closest They Came, a series where we take a look back on the days when drivers, winless at NASCAR's highest level, came painfully close to etching their names into the history books. Today, we'll be looking back on Joe Rutman's race in the 1986 Miller High Life 400 from the Richmond Fairgrounds Raceway. A journeyman racer early in his career, Rutman would make his first NASCAR start at Riverside Raceway in 1963, making three more starts prior to 1981. Continuing to compete regularly at the local level, he would first find national success in the USAC Stock Car Division, winning Rookie of the Year in 1978 and taking the championship in 1980. He would begin competing regularly in the Cup Series after joining J.D. Stacy's team in 1981, making 17 starts that year and running his first full season in 1982. Entering the 1986 season, Rutman had earned 12 top 5 and 37 top 10 finishes, including a best run of second in the 1981 Winston Western 500 from Riverside. Leading 39 of the race's 119 laps, he was passed for the lead with 10 laps remaining by Bobby Allison and would finish close behind. Unfortunately, the event was not broadcast flag to flag in its entirety. Along with having scored a Bush Series victory at Dover in 1982, Rutman had shown the ability to contend throughout the early 80s. Joining Kenny Bernstein's brand new team, Rutman would take over driving duties for the number 26 Quaker State ride. The second race weekend of the season would bring them to the Richmond Fairgrounds Raceway. Rutman would show speed early in the weekend. However, after rain shortened the qualifying session, the field would be lined up by points, putting him 17th. In row nine. There's Joe Rutman with the new Kenny Bernstein team. 45, 50 degrees. These cars have been sitting there all morning. They're cold. There you see Harry Gant trying to get some warmth in those tires. Skating rink, and next to him is the Quaker State car, number 26. Alongside comes Joe Rutman. Boy, it was bad on uh, Rutman. He had the second fastest time in practice. One more lap, and then they did not get a chance to get out here and run. The race would be slowed by accidents multiple times in the early laps. A four-car incident on lap 10, Lake Speed would crash right after the lap 14 restart, and a large pileup on lap 18 that would involve 13 cars, including Rutman. Seven, eight, eight automobiles have tangled up, and right where he crashed a year ago, there you see Bill Elliott's number nine impaled, the number nine of Elliott right up on the fence. As seen from Harry Gant's onboard, Rutman nearly missed it, but caught the right rear. Back off. Ooh, did he take a wrap there. And then he's faced the other way. And the damage would not affect his car upon the resumption of the race. By the time the race was slowed for the fourth incident of the day, on lap 59, Rutman would be up to the top 10 for the first time of the day, eventually reaching the top five on the next run. Kirk Bryan and Tim Richmond would bring out the fifth caution on lap 153. After pit stops, Rutman would line up second for the lap 159 restart. Bobby Allison pulls up. The big story on this restart would be number 26, the Rutman car, the Quaker State car, running in second position. What a great run because, you know, we can look at his car on the right side. It has no right side. Practically, he was in that accident up there in turn three. He's fought his way back. He's in second spot. He had been in ninth on one of the latest rundowns. 157 laps complete. Now that we have experienced this next caution, he has a chance to run up in front. That car really took some abuse. He stayed with it and stayed on it. He had a terrible crash last week. Winston Cup competition coming to you live on the Superstation from Richmond, Virginia. Down the line, the break. And in a turn number one, Earnhardt draws away. Rutman's got a tough spot. Car 26, the green car back there, hung on the outside. He gets by Bobby down the front straightaway, though. By Bobby Austin, car 22. See the right side of that car badly chewed up on number 26, Joe Rutman, leader Earnhardt. Let's see if he'll break away as he did earlier. On this restart, Earnhardt first, Rutman second, Bodine third, Kyle Petty fourth, Neil Bonnet fifth, Rusty Wallace sixth, followed by Waltrip and Allison. Ken Schrader's crash would slow the race once more on lap 202. The action would resume on lap 210, and he would race within the top five throughout the next run. As we get set on a restart in our live coverage here on the Superstation today, Dale Earnhardt is leading, Jeff Bodine is in second, Kyle Petty is in third, Joe Rutman in fourth, Neil Bonnet in fifth, Rusty Wallace in sixth, all the lead lap as they scramble back into action. 
the South together in Trenton, New Jersey, to see Hendrick run was really an experience. Now there's your battle for fourth. That is Rutman, and closing up on him is Neil Bonnet. Number 26, the green and white car, is Joe Rutman out of Upland, California, the new Kenny Bernstein team. The Quaker State car that had our onboard camera, and it got nailed, as you can see, the side of that car. They've changed the dimensions of that by three or four inches on the right. He's trying to fend off Neil Bonnet at number 12. He crashed so hard here, broke his neck a year ago out coming out of turn two. When he went right through the wall. Having a good run here today. He lets Joe Rutman go by on the inside. Now Bonnet has the opportunity to try to pass. Kyle Petty, car seven, Terry Labonte, who just entered the race again. Car 44 and 26, Joe Rutman. Well, Joe Rutman on the brand new team, now running in fourth after getting slammed earlier out here, and it's been full contact stock car racing today. Last week, Joe Rutman tore his car up pretty badly at Daytona. I saw Kenny Bernstein, the drag racer who has formed it, who has gone in with Bobby Hawkins to uh, make this team team racing or whatever it's called. I told Kenny, welcome to circle drag racing, because that's the price you pay when you make a mistake at Daytona. Jump the car. I didn't... You know, Neil Bonnet had a had a wheel break on him, and that's what set all that up. And I thought Ruckman had to be injured in that terrible crash. He said he came out of that just fine. He said, but you talked to me about Rocky Dam, and I'll tell you what hurt is. What a great run Joe Rutman's had today. I'm sure that I saw Kenny earlier on. I'm sure that he, Bobby Hawkins, and all those people are are just ecstatic with the way the day the day is going. Fourth overall. Joe was having a little problems getting by Terry. Well, let's find out what kind of problems that car sustained when it got slammed a little earlier. Chris is in their pits. I'm with Larry McReynolds, Joe Rutman's crew chief. What kind of shape is the car? Well, we got a lot of sheet metal damage, but that's about it. I'm just trying to stay after it. It's about taking care of the car, taking care of the brakes, and maybe we can come home with a good finish. What, you, what is Joe telling you? The car feels pretty good. I mean, we had we hadn't made a lot of changes to it because it stayed that way pretty much all day. We changed the tire stagger just a little bit, but other than that, he said it feels pretty good. Thank you very much. Here you have it from Joe Rutgers crew chief, Larry McReynolds. Thank you. Larry McReynolds with a brand new team. And he's doing a beautiful job of that organization. Joe Rotman suffered a real heartbreaker here in 82. He spun up here on this fourth turn. He was leading about 244, 245 laps into the event. And one lap later, it started raining. And then the race was flying to a halt. And he wound up the day 15th. Greg Sachs' spin on lap 272 would set up another restart on lap 278, with Rutman lining up in fourth. Moving up to third shortly thereafter, just behind Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Bodine at the height of their rivalry. Joe Rutman third, Kyle Petty fourth, Neil Bonnet fifth, Darrell Waltrip sixth. They have Earnhardt pinned. They've got him. Earnhardt's going to jump down the hill. Is he going to be able to do it? He and Bodine get together. They're rubbing sheep and long turn. Bang! Four, bang. Uh, Earnhardt pulls out of that one still in first. Back house. On a nice, cold, brisk day here in Richmond, Virginia, watching Earnhardt and Bodine go at it to win it all. We also saw some measure of the determination that Dale Earnhardt has when it comes to a race with Jeff Bodine. Those two bumped and battered just like that all the way down the back stretch of Daytona in the Bush Clash. They hammered on each other through the 125 qualifier down in Daytona. They were beating on each other again in the Goodies 300. And when it came down to the Daytona 500, Earnhardt felt like he had a little score to settle, and he ended up losing the race because he ran out of gas. Here at Richmond, you know Dale Earnhardt is not going to let Bodine drive by him. And Joe Rubin is right on the back bumper of the five car. Joe Rubin, car 26, right on the back bumper of Bodine. Rusty Wallace and Neil Bonnet would bring out the race's eighth caution on lap 321. Rubman would take the lead on the pit exchange by making a two-tire stop. Remember, as we get set for a start, Rutman will be your leader. And then after Rutman comes Earnhardt in second, Bodine in third, Kyle Petty lies fourth, Waltrip in fifth, Neil Bonnet still shown in the lead lap in sixth. Joe Rutman leading the race right now. Okay on gas is the report from NASCAR. They've made the uh, repairs on car number 27 and put Rusty Wallace back out here. Look at Joe Rutman trying to get some heat in the tires, that green and white, number 26, as they get set. Here's the rest of the field organizing for a start. He's also trying to wipe the debris, the, the small stones and pebbles that the tires collect. He's trying to wipe those things off and get the tires as clean as he can. He's on the throttle. 330 laps complete as they come by. Rusty Wallace now reported in 12th position as they hit the green. And 
what a jump shot. You can see some of that tire debris on that speed shot as they come down through there. There is Joe Rutman off that second turn, and he pulls away. How about it if Rutman could put this one together? Joe Rutman for that new team has about a 15 car length advantage. All of them have been freshly shot. Tires all the way around. Here's Rutman down into turn number one. Shadow's getting a little long as they come into turn number two. It's a shame that that early accident took the, uh, the camera away, the in-car camera from Joe Rutman's car. Otherwise, we could see exactly what it's like to lead the Richmond 400 from Joe Rutman's perspective. Again, it's a little over 100 miles an hour on these straightaways. The straightaways are just 600 feet long. And then you really, what do you do to go through one of these corners? Use up a lot of brake? A lot of brake. Go down the straightaway right now. Joe Rutman slams on the brakes down in turn one. But you can't slam them on too hard if you do. One end or the other may lock up. You've got to be very careful with the brakes, but slow the car down, get in the middle of the turn, and if you can, come off the throttle, off the corner, on the throttle, all the way, you've got a good day going for you. Joe Rutman's got a new lease on life here. You remember we commented that just uh, before that yellow flag, he was stuck out there with a bad set of tires. It brought him in. They put new rights on. He not only got the tires he wanted, but because he was able to get out of the pits earliest, he is now in front of Darrell Walker, but also Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Bodine. There you see the leaders. Joe Rutman, I watched him coming off turn four just a couple of laps ago. He is driving his heart out. He's coming off that court. We can see him sideways using the steering wheel, using the throttle, anything he can to get every ounce of speed out of that Buick. Rutman would lead a total of 21 laps before Earnhardt got by on lap 344. Despite falling to third, he would stay in the fight as business would pick up out front. Kenny Bernstein has a chance to win a Grand National race and only his second start. Three-time world drag racing champion, but down to the inside. There's the move. And it's Earnhardt back underway and into the lead. But I don't know. Now he's got the job of getting by Joe Rutman. And Rutman is closing. Closing up just a little. Then he falls back. He came right back up in there. And also note that number 11 Waltrip is closing. One of the toughest tracks on this entire multi-million dollar Winston Cup Series. Just over 50 laps to go. Dale Earnhardt in car three has got his work cut out for him. If he's going to... Keep Joe Rutman in 26 and Darrell Waltrip in 11. And particularly Darrell Waltrip in 11. He's coming. But right now, his only choice is to slow down, keep it on the bottom of the racetrack. The problem that Darrell Waltrip has right now is the 26 car of Joe Rutman and the 5 car of Jeff Bodine. They're gaining on him. We may have four cars battling for the lead in a moment. 40 laps to go. Earnhardt and Darrell Waltrip would wreck fighting for the lead on lap 397. Rutman was in a perfect position to capitalize, but unfortunately got clipped and spun as he made his way past the leaders. Kyle Petty would sneak past to earn his first career victory as Rutman would limp his damaged car across the line a close second. That time, which is a good way of trying to break the line of the fellow behind you. It's just a... Here's... Waltrip keeps him straight, but he keeps Earnhardt. on tapping. Now oh, Waltrip on the inside. Side by side, down to the inside. Oh! oh, oh Four cars, there oh, it goes. There's Bo Nine into the fence. Joe Rutman spins around. Who's going to win the race? Where's Kyle Petty? Kyle Petty has slowed down. He's going slow. Caution Kyle is Kyle Petty's going to win the race. I think Kyle's going to take it home. Joe Rutman gets going again. I think he's going to run second. Car number three comes around. All oh, beaten up. Wild finish here at Richmond. Joe Rutman is all beaten up. Look at the back of Rutman's car. In replay, let's look at what happened. There are now two laps to go. Darrell Walton's alongside of him. There's the hook. Bang. Earnhardt came down, caught the right rear of Darrell's car. And both of them spin. Darrell hits the car hard. Joe Rutman can't control the car. If he could just keep them spinning. Look at Neil Bonnet's car. Look at Bonnet's car coming down the front. Neil oh, Bonnet's coming that's Walt by. That's Walter. Waltrip's car with nothing left. is coming down by us now. There's number seven that came through that calamity up here on the last lap. Coming down. Harold Kinder, flag in hand, and Kyle Petty, who watched it all. Checkered flag is coming out. 
I believe right now. He last made a full-season Cup Series effort in 1991, making sporadic starts thereafter, eventually finishing his career with 19 top 5 and 60 top 10 finishes. He would begin running full-time in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series in 1995, becoming a perennial contender, eventually winning 13 races and finishing in the top 5 in points 5 times. Closing out his career with success as a popular veteran of the series, it was a fitting end to a great career. Though he never claimed a victory in the Cup Series, the sheer length of Joe Ruttman's racing career deserves respect. Earning victories in National Touring Stock Car Series in four different decades, there was no doubt he could get it done behind the wheel.